Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Adventures. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India. And I promised you in my last video that we were going to make a dipole out of that fixed AliExpress bell and then test it on the Nano VNA. Uh, but band conditions have been poor lately. So instead of making a QRP dipole, I, make a, I made a 100 watt dipole just in order to be able to get some QSOs uh, when band conditions are the way they are now. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to take a closer look at this ballon, see how I made it. Uh, principle is exactly the same as the uh, AliExpress ballon. Um, then we're going to use the Nano VNA, which I got from AliExpress to uh, tune this antenna, to trim this antenna, to get the wires into resonance and show you how to do that. And um, then we're going to discuss a little bit about using a Nano VNA or another analyzer to trim an antenna. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the ballon, but before we get to that, if you haven't heard about AliExpress before, AliExpress is an online marketplace where you can get pretty much any kind of good. You can get cheap things, expensive things, in the middle things. You can get ham radio gear, clothes, auto parts, full-size campers, whatever you can think of you can get over on AliExpress in all kinds of qualities and all kinds of price ranges. But for me, AliExpress is most relevant when it comes to ham gear. And uh, since they sponsor me and give me uh, stuff I want to show that to you and show you what's relevant and most of all what you probably shouldn't buy but except for that little ballon I haven't had any duds from my AliExpress purchases so let's go ahead take a closer look at the ballon and this ballon I made this from a winder designed by ham radio dude and Sean's a great guy and he makes really good winders so I figured I'd utilize one of his then I got a T1443 toroid here, which I've wrapped by filer with a magnet wire here, just the same way as I did it on the other one, except I got a crossover here. 10 turns, uh, that goes out to these terminals here, and that's pretty much what makes the dipole work. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna extend the wires out, we're gonna attach some rope, get some 10 pegs, and uh, then we're gonna just make this dipole resonant with the Nano VNA. And uh, I can show you the Nano VNA real fast. Here's the Nano VNA. I've been using the smaller one for a while. Uh, the uh, 2.4 inch, I think. This is a four inch Nano VNA. Uh, my eyesight isn't what it was, so I really appreciate the larger screen. And I put an overlay to the AliExpress page with this Nano VNA on right now, so you can see how much it is. I honestly don't remember, but a Nano VNA is one of the best tools you can have. And also, um, what I'm going to show you from the screen on this Nano VNA is going to be screenshots because filming the screen in bright sunlight is just basically a nightmare. So uh, instead of having poor pictures, I'm going to take screenshots here and overlay when I talk about the SWR on the video. But let's go ahead, let's uh, do all the preparations and uh, get this dipole extended uh, and ready for tuning. And also what I probably didn't say is that this is a 20 meter dipole uh, because 20 is the most useful band when you're only going to have one band and dipoles are monoband antennas. So let's start with extending these out here. And it's probably a lot more easy to do this before you hang up the antenna, but I did this in, well, since I was filming it. So uh, we'll just have to live with that. And then I'm gonna show you a couple of good tricks when uh, putting a dipole on a fiberglass mast. Uh, but no matter how you do it, the mast is gonna bend a little bit or a lot depending on the dipole and how you make it work. And since this is a 20 meter dipole, it means that each leg should be about five meters long. This, the legs are now about five meters and 15 centimeters. So I'm thinking we're gonna cut quite a bit on them. It's gonna be resonant on probably a lot lower uh, frequency than 20 meters, but uh, it's easier to cut wire than add wire. And 
one of my best takeaways when it comes to setting up dipoles is to remember the coax but because in this case the feed point is very soon going to be uh, six meters above ground and not so easy to get to so uh, by remembering to attach the coax right away off the bat you save yourself a lot of trouble uh, the next very smart advice is some electrical tape to tape the coax to the mast that prevents a lot of drag on the mast and it'll prevent a lot of the bending of the mast there's still going to be some bending but a lot less once you have the weight of the coax pulling down on the mast and not sideways so we're going to start relatively high up and just do a couple of loops of tape here Probably one is more than enough. And speaking about the winder from Ham Radio Dude, the mast is also a Ham Radio Dude mast. It's a Little Dude 6, so it's a 6 meter mast. And I love this mast, it collapses really, really small. I got a video on it if you want to see it. And uh, it's, it's lightweight and small and still relatively stuff for what it is and what it is is a six meter carbon fiber mass so some hams will say you can't do a vertical on it i usually haven't had any issues running uh, a vertical on a carbon fiber mast but there might be might be issues with it i mean carbon fiber is conductive material so uh, just be aware of that if you're thinking about running a vertical here just every every meter meter and a half or so tape the coax to the mast that'll save you a lot of issues down the road and we got the mast deployed here next step is extending the legs and the reason we have this wire here is to just get a lower angle on top we don't want the angle to be too steep on top for an inverted v dipole so let's just adjust this and the mast will bend a bit when we get to this point there is no way of that not happening and i usually just leave it a little bit loose to start with because the mast is as I said, the mast is going to bend and I'm using face tracking on my gimbal here and that doesn't work if the distance gets too large. So that is why I sometimes have to do these weird hand motions here. And I also doesn't tie too hard because we're going to loosen and tighten these ropes a whole lot. So let's go ahead, put it on the Nano VNA and see where it's at. And right now, it is a little bit too long it's got its resonance point at 13.450 so roughly a megahertz too low we're gonna trim that down uh, cut just a couple of centimeters on each side do that back and forth until we reach the right resonance point and i'm gonna cut about three centimeters off And I'm gonna save those three centimeters because when we get to the other side here, we're gonna use that to measure and be able to cut off the exact same amount here. And uh, I'm gonna, I cannot do this without loosening the rope. So let's go ahead and loosen the rope a little bit. Let's cut off the same amount here. And we'll get a rough estimate on how much we need to cut off when we see how much the resonant point moves. Okay, let's check the nano VNA and see where we're at. We're at 13,650. So we moved it a little bit up, but we still got a ways to go. And 
if we take a look at the nano VNA now, we're at 3900, so we're getting there. I'm thinking about two centimeters more. And if we now look at the nano VNA, we're at 14050, which would be good if we were gonna do uh, CW. We're still well within with the 20 meter band, but I'm thinking a centimeter more and we'll be good. And then we'll take a look at the curve. And we're now resonant at 14150 at the top of the band. We're at 1.46 SWR. And at the bottom of the band, 1.4. So, I'm gonna say that this antenna is tuned. And if we look at the curve for the entire band, you can see that it's well beneath 1.5 SWR in the entire band. So this Nano VNA works, and I'm not gonna say that you necessarily need a Nano VNA to tune an antenna, but I'd recommend you to get an antenna analyzer to tune an antenna, and a Nano VNA is pretty much the best deal you can get on an antenna analyzer. It's relatively cheap and it's really powerful. There are other analyzers as well. I mean, I use uh, the FAVA4 a whole lot because that has only three buttons and is a lot better in the field. But when tuning an antenna, being able to see that curve in real time makes it a whole lot easier to just figure out what kind of adjustments you need to make. So there is only one thing left to do. It's to take everything down and uh, pack up and then wait for better band conditions and go out and do a poda with this antenna. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Morton LB0 Fox India. You're watching LB0 Fox India Norwegian Adventures. Give it a thumbs up if you liked this video, a thumbs down if you watched this far and didn't like it. Leave a comment if you have opinions and your hams. I do know you have opinions and please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. I need more subscribers or I don't necessarily need more subscribers, but only about 80% of you guys that watch my videos are subscribed, so it'd be nice to have a couple more of you in here. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching again. See you down the bands. See you in my next video, 73.